It's almost 60 degrees today. A shout out to Walpole to hit the Woodcraft. Pick up that trans tint dye. It's gonna be great, like a little vacation. You gotta wait in the car because I'm not the breed of jackrabbit that takes cameras all around. Behold the blood of thy enemies. She said this will last my lifetime, but I reckon Bill and I will prove her wrong. I had to do it. Donuts. Donuts. Coffee. So hot, it's been brewed on the surface of the sun, I think. Yeah, like Be living in Sip City for a while, because there's no way I'm necking that. <laughs> this uh, little mute thing made. This piece of felt is going to go on here once I lock tight these parts so they stay together. Mute using the toggle end of toggle bolts. Some people call them butterfly bolts. Some people just call them wall anchors. Two of those screwed to the inside of the shell. A piece of modified angle aluminum. Yeah, it's just like aluminum some kind of trim. I don't even know where it came from. I think it might, might have been part of like a threshold or something. So that's the muffler that rests against the head spring yeah. load. And then the banjo tuner is going to go in for tensioning of the snare wires. Yeah, this like spring loader muffler thing is pretty much the key to like making these things work. It took me a while to figure out. Now that I'm doing this the second time, and even though I'm redesigning it to make everything like more streamlined and easier to fabricate. This thing is still taking absolutely forever, so I have a feeling that we're not gonna make any more of these. <laughs> it's just... They'd have to be priced above what people are willing to pay, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a really cool thing. Like, it's, it's like a drum that actually sounds pretty good and is tiny, and you can put a foam in it to use it as a practice pad. Like, it's really cool, but like, we're gonna have to sell them for like 400 bucks. God. No one's gonna pay that, so. Meanwhile, I think I'm gonna start with red dye. Do it. Oh yeah. Get all that glue deep down in them tea nuts. Yep. <laughs> makes it makes it nice and non-functional. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that, actually. Part of why I threw the tension rods in there, that and for alignment. Little polyurethane on the laser cut badge action. I think we got badges for the rope kit, Weiss drums, and the other drum Pipe set band. that I don't know who's for. Pipe band. MPB. Mayonnaise, peanut butter, and bread. 100% certain that's what that stands for. That's pretty good. A bit of a struggle. Yeah, the little router setup that I failed to film because I was busy dyeing hoops red. Looks like this might actually fit. I gotta cut another one. So we're gonna stick those in with killer red yep. after we dye them. I think. Yeah, gotta dye. Gotta dye the hoops black. So the you'll tape. you'll cut the strip and I'll dye the hoops and yep. you move on to this thing, maybe. Those are drying and then I'll hit them with poly. Yeah. Shells could be sprayed. Yeah, I was thinking should go now that the dehumidifier's been on for a while, see where those shells are at. Um, 
Otherwise... Definitely want to get these roped and pressed. Yes, maybe maybe you'll do ropes next. Rope, rope a dope. Rope a dope. Rope a dope. I'm going this way. Rope. Six hundred foot spool of rope. And you're not really, you're just measuring by arm lengths? Yeah. 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. So you yeah. tape the end, chop it in the middle. That's how you keep the rope from fraying. Yeah. And you buy direct from New England ropes, right? Uh, no, we get it through R&W Rope. R&W Rope? Yeah, um, I don't think you can deal with New England Ropes directly, actually. I think they only go through distributors or retailers or whatever. I used to get it stuff from S Marina, but they charge too much money for everything. R&W Rope is actually really close to us. Um, can't remember what town it's in. It's somewhere, like, a little south of here. Um, but they're awesome. They carry all kinds of stuff. Their prices are really good. They're really nice to work with. So that's where that's where pretty much all our rope comes from. Do you have to buy a 600 foot spool, or that's just the cheaper. biggest we can get? Can you get bigger? No. Well, I don't know. I've never asked if I can get like like if I want 5,000 feet. How does it? You know what I mean? <laughs> like a commercial cable spool? Yeah, because maybe it does. Like I don't know, but that'd be um, amazing. Yeah, that would actually be pretty cool. <laughs> be kind of hard to manage, though. Four. Knock something off the, knock one of the work orders off the magnet over there. Great. We're trying a work order system. So far, it's working pretty well, actually. It works to get the initial order and then keep track of stuff, but I think we have a deficiency because we someone needs to input it back into the system. Oh yeah. It's and not, then we don't really have a system because this is just an Excel spreadsheet. And we have no inventory system. It'd be great if we had an all-in-one system. Order comes in, you punch that in. It tells us if we have it in stock or need to order it. Yeah, it keeps a list. Are. We'd also have to have an inventory, which would be great. If anyone knows of a software system that does all that, let us know, because we could use it. This is the point in the evening where Bill lets me get seven years into a drone. Then he starts. <laughs> it, still, it still kicks my ass. <laughs> it's a setup. <laughs> well, that wasn't really the intention, but not to mention it, that's pretty fun. See, I picked the tighter ears, too, so, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's part of it. I totally expected it, so. It's all right. I mean, if you didn't whoop me on my second drum, I'd be a little worried about your <laughs> prowess. Yeah, you've got a point. All right, so, I've been wondering. Mm -hmm. Since you are a porter of so many instruments, yeah, and and I'm not talking like a guy that just has 20 guitars. I mean, <laughs> a marimba, a xylophone, horns, basses, everything. Do you remember your first instrument? Not counting a toy and not counting a stupid recorder. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing was. Um, a piano that my parents got, but that was because my sister really wanted to learn how to play. So my folks got, uh, you know, got us lessons, which I didn't really want to do, but my sister did want to do. So that didn't really stick. Unfortunately, I still can't play piano for shit, which is a bummer because that would be really useful. So was your first personal instrument a bass or a tuba? Uh, it was a trumpet. Oh. 
Yeah, start playing trumpet in fifth grade. Uh, and then the next like instrument that I owned. Do you do you still have that trumpet? Yeah, actually, of course. <laughs> Um, well, it's like I never got good enough. Well, at least not when I was a kid. I never got good enough at trumpet to like have a reason to upgrade it. Because by the time I got to junior high, I was already playing euphonium and then tuba. And you own at least one euphonium and one tuba. Dude, I'm actually not sure how many euphoniums I own. I'm not kidding. My probably like eight or ten. My first was that that's student model Ludwig metal snare with the plastic clamshell oh, case. Yeah, like an acrylite or whatever. And it came with the, the black practice pad with a thick yeah, disc with, with like the, the suction cup onto the head thing. The flattest top hat you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. I still have it. It's in my it's in the closet at my parents' house. And then I think my first drum set was it. It had to be a made in Japan because it was like just branded with a random. It was Ruthers. Oh. And I know I've seen people on YouTube. It's a guy that comments on the channel sometimes. AR Drummer, I think his name is. Yeah. His channel name. And I think he had a Ruther in his, in his drum studio. He has multiple drum sets. Yeah, that sounds like a, that definitely sounds like a random MIJ. Like a, a little four piece MIJ with Royce symbols that I would. I would play for a half hour and they'd be so dented I'd have to go in the garage and flatten them out with a hammer. It was such a piece of boob. Yeah. So trumpet? Trumpet yeah. then euphonium and tuba? Yeah, trumpet and uh, Yeah, and then somewhere along the line, like in high school, I picked up trombone and stuff. I think the second instrument I actually owned was a guitar. And a black Epiphone acoustic. So what the heck did the bass come around? I started playing bass when I was a sophomore in high school, but I played one that belonged to the school for a while. And was it the does someone know how to play the bass <laughs> type situation? No, like they needed a bass player. I had like the worst music teacher in the history of ever. Um, it was the same guy for junior high and high school, and he was like pretty discouraging most of the time. And so like we had this crappy upright bass. It was like a half size K. Uh, at the school and the jazz band at the time had nobody playing bass. And I was like, well, I kind of want to learn how to play bass. And he's like, that doesn't seem like something you're going to be able to do. And I was like, all right, well, can I take this, this string bass home like over the summer? So I did. And uh, I, I got to where I could like, play it kind of OK. And then my music teacher was like, oh, OK, well, I guess you can do it. So he bought like a $100 crappy wash burn bass knockoff and uh, so I used that and then the first real bass I got was a Rickenbacker it was like my pride and joy for a long time wait do you still have that yeah that bass is awesome I mean there are instruments that I have sold along the way but not The only instrument I ever parted with was that four-piece Ruthers. Yeah. I, my first good tuba was a was a Canadian brass, uh, which was uh, Canadian brass. Uh, over the years, had a few different companies make branded instruments for them. Uh, most mostly Yamaha and Getson. So the tuba I had was the Getson version which was a really, really, really good horn. Um, but it was a little too short for me to play it comfortably. But I kind of regret selling it because, I mean, I needed to to be able to buy the horn I have now, but that was a really, really, really good horn. I just put this rope through the eye. Well, I, you know, I do this a lot. <laughs> wow.
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be over here dying hoops. <laughs> hey, it's a good thing I make drums instead of instruments that I like actually play because I'd have a lot of difficulty <laughs> selling them. Yeah. If I made guitars all the time. I had to stop making drums because they were taking over. Yeah, but well, you won't sell them, you know. <laughs> I managed to get coat four of the red dye on all these rings. Bill's doing a second coat of poly on this practice pad frame. Not sure, these might be ready for a second coat, not sure. Yeah, yeah they're still a little tacky. tacky. Looks like Circus Olay up in this joint. Bill's gonna start hanging from a ribbon. <laughs> this drum is in for a spruce up. New painted hoops, new rope, clean up the hardware, clean up the ears, keep the head, fix a crack, possibly reinforce. I might take it apart. Bill is soaking gut for the two Steve Weiss drums. So he's in a holding pattern since all that stuff's wet, but He's got some show and tell. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got a, uh, I got another trombone to use for the Turkish Crescent for the top part. A sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And uh, so this was from Goodwill. Dude, that case has seen better days. Oh, this case is toast. Uh, this is awesome though. I don't know what that is. It feels like it's really on there. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's like, oh. Paper Water company that makes decal? cases? <laughs> I don't know. But apparently this horn used to belong to Bill Martin. Oh uh, yeah. Let's we'll see what it is. Good old Bill Martin. Ooh, free paper. Remember? Oh man, this thing has seen yeah. better days. It is a Bundy, which is a student student line. Okay. That's not too bad. Not worrying about this tearing though. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh yeah, that's, that's way chunky. All right, let's see how bad this slide is. Well, I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh, wait a minute. That's well, do they crazy. usually come seized up with corrosive spit? Yeah, this is dirty, but this is actually like pretty good. Wait a minute. He's gonna leave the spit in there. I don't want to use whatever mouthpiece is in that case. They actually said, oh, they did. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, wait a minute. That's diesel. Dude, look at that. I've never seen that before. What? See how it's like cup shaped and then there's a ridge and then it's funnel shaped? Yeah. I've never seen a mouthpiece that did that before. I'm gonna have to clean that and try it. That's crazy. It's got an engraving on it. J. Parduba and Son, New York. Double cup, star three star. Yeah, it's a double cup, all right. That's crazy. Mm. All right, let's see. Not offensive. It's actually like not a terrible horn. The slides, I mean, the slides are dirty, but it's pretty, oops, pretty good. That was twenty bucks. Twenty six dollars hmm. plus like ten bucks shipping, I think. So thirty six dollars. And we're gonna chop it up. And we're gonna cut it up. And all know, right, trombone, you're about to meet your death. Double cup. Yeah, this mouthpiece is crazy. I'm gonna throw that in the ultrasonic and. Ooh. That's gonna need some work. <laughs> oh, oh. Got the beast apart. This is some sort of a decal. The stripe of the stars, this whole emblem. A couple of the edges are coming up, so we gotta adhere that back down. There's the nasty original seam. This is a big crack, which happens to land right on the edge of this 
backer block slash vertical reinforcement thing. Probably an impact or got crushed. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know who made this drum. Uh, there, the owner um, thinks it might have been made by Gus Moeller, but. It doesn't look like a molar drum to me. It's got the, the vertical internal internal reinforcement bracing. So Sean Mead, if you're watching this, please tell us if this is a molar drum or not. This label says Newbridge, Meridian, Connecticut. It's it definitely had a lot of people work on it. Yeah, it's got I mean, a I lot of holes for old attachments. It's got more modern T-nuts. The hardware is like a magnesium cast type stuff. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely skeptical that it's a Mahler drum, but even if it is, not much is left of, of, of the original instrument. We know someone had their hands on it in 92. And used to list, uh, belong to Alan Thompson, which in the rudimental drumming world is kind of a big deal. We'll have two drums out the door. Those are soon to follow. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that rotation drum set. I think that's gonna be, with all kangaroo heads, that thing is gonna be awesome. Oh yeah, we're still waiting on one head. Oh, they came in. Sweet. That's a wrap. We're tapping. Apologies for the redundant videos. It's. As my internet buddy Sam from HHG says, drum shops, you know, it's kind of all the same stuff over and over. There's some diversity, but you're kind of just repeating them at some point. Speaking of Sam, he'll be at the Delaware Drum Show February 27th. If anyone's interested, he makes cool drums. Check him out. Stave, segmented, cast, carbon steel, Sweet paint jobs, sweet finishing. And if anyone knows of a computer system that does inventory, work orders, tracking, maybe uh, we could it tie it into some fortune. digital signage and doesn't cost a fortune. That'd be great. Well, we're at it. If you got a clicker press laying around, we could use one of those. Oh, clicker press too. Yeah, we could use that. <laughs> All right. Thanks.